Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for today's webinar, How to Get Media Attention for Your Youth While Making a Difference. My name is Carissa Rano and I'm with OJDP's National Training and Technical Assistance Center. As your technical host, I would like to take a couple of minutes to discuss a few features of the Adobe Connect webinar platform and provide a few announcements to keep in mind. For those of you wishing to download a copy of the PowerPoint slides and other important documents, you may do so by locating the handouts pod directly above the chat area. Click on the name of the file and then click the download button. At the end of today's webinar, there will be a Q&A session where the presenters will address some of the questions in the presentation. Please type your questions in the chat box if they arrive. For those of you participating in today's webinar as a group, please take a moment to help us count. Go to the chat window, type in the total number of additional people in the room with you today. If you are viewing alone, there is no need to type anything into the chat pod this time. Following today's webinar, there'll be attendees will be sent a certificate of attendance. The certificate is sent approximately one hour following the conclusion of the event and is sent via an Adobe Connect thank you email. Please keep an eye on your email for your certificate. Finally, this event will be archived in approximately three weeks on OJDP's online university at www.ojdpou.org, where you can also view past webinars. Thank you again for joining us today. I will now turn it over to Mary Kim to begin today's webinar. Thank you, Carissa. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this webinar. I appreciate uh, everyone who signed up, and it's, I promise, going to be very informative. We have had quite a few people signing up for this, and we're super excited um, to be offering this webinar today. I am uh, joined by a young man who I'm very excited uh, to have on the phone with us. Uh, Jay Fife is the second speaker of the Muskogee Nation Youth Council, and um, he's going to talk about his experience uh, and his youth council's experience when they um, led a 110-mile march in Oklahoma City last summer and the media attention um, that that event generated thanks to all of their efforts uh, promoting the march. So welcome, Jay. Hello. Glad to be here. And as we normally do in our traditional native ways, we wish to start this webinar in a good way. And uh, I'd like to call upon Jay to offer a prayer uh, as we get started. Thank you, Mary Kim. Um, so like Mary Kim said, we usually start um, many activities in our with a prayer. So with that being said, I will lead a prayer in my traditional tongue, the Muscogee language. So if you will, please pray with me. Jehojef Karajigegas, Shivamagada Dalegas, Mema, Halwe Nagi, Komitski, Moma, Iropoma, Yamaigana, Omomigas, Netta Slake, Taklegan, Mojanetta Bomas, Momit, Moma Wish and his Pomwegas, Ahuisage is some Wegia, Ida Bomen, Nagi, Punao Pusawiji Adai, is kissed at Shipohayit's kiss, Moes. Halawayagir asapoi Jesus. Omemegi da yikche da. Moen takti da. Chinagir. Imongat omegat. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. I really appreciate that. It is um, part of our tradition to involve uh, Unity Youth in our presentations. And so I'm so happy that Jay is able to join us today as part of our leadership training. So we have a poll question, and this is how we'd like to start off. We have a question that we'd like for all of you to participate in. So if you'll just select which best fits um, your answer, and that is, how do you promote your youth activities? Do you promote it by word of mouth, through flyers, social media? Do you write a news release, A, B, and C, or all of the above? And I see a lot of people answering the poll. Thank you for that. We have quite a few answering all of the above. We also have quite a few who uh, promote it just by word of mouth, a very uh, significant number. 
the next highest would be um, through social media. We have a lot of young people that are on social media, so that makes sense um, that we are promoting those activities through social media. So as we uh, start to complete our poll, it looks like more and more are using all of the above um, resources. So thank you for participating in that poll. It really helps um, us to see um, what resources everyone is using. So as we uh, move forward in our webinar, we'd like to talk about our topic and the purpose of this webinar. How to get media attention for your youth who are making a difference. Oftentimes at Unity, we're asked this question. A lot of uh, youth groups and advisors and and chaperone and just youth uh, workers want to know, you know, how do we get the media's attention for all these great things our youth are doing? And so we want to focus on that. Our youth absolutely deserve a lot of attention for the great things they're doing. We're um, going to give you some tips on how to get uh, the attention of news agencies. And of course, it starts with um, one of the ways, of course, is an effective news release and preparing your youth for interviews. So our learning objectives today are learning the five W's and one H for preparing an effective news release, a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to get the media's attention. In addition, uh, we'll ask you to think about how you're going to write this news release. Um, should you start with your conclusion and why sometimes it's important to start by using the inverted pyramid method. Some of you may not be familiar with that term, but in the journalism world, uh, they are asked and challenged to write their most important facts at the beginning as opposed to the end, and we'll explain that later. So as we uh, move forward, we also want to uh, give you some tips on how to be ready for media interviews. Learn how to prepare the right talking points for your youth representative. Sometimes uh, we call on youth at our Unity events because the media is there, and um, we put them in front of the camera. And sometimes, you know, we we don't always give them the talking points, uh, but we want our youth to be ready when um, the news people are wanting to do these interviews. So we'll give you some tips on that. And so I'm going to toss it to Jay now, who's going to talk about uh, the event that he and his youth council organized over the summer and all the media attention they received and how they went about getting uh, that media attention. So Jay, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mary Kim. Um, so an event that I did over the summer, I actually planned and coordinated the event, um, was called the Muskogee March 2016. And what it was, was a, <laughs> it was a teen dating violence awareness walk that um, kind of, I was inspired by the Longest Walk 5 in April. And some of you may have heard of it, some of you may not. Um, I encourage everybody to um, do a little research on the Longest Walk 5. But um, the, the event really inspired me to, to do it in my community. And I participated in the Longest Walk 5 in o Oklahoma and Alabama. So I kind of got to see how it worked and how everything went down. And so after Alabama, I really saw the need that, hey, I can do this. And so I talked to my adult advisor, Miss um, Nancy Mason, and um, she, we talked about it for a good 30, 45 minutes. And um, she was kind of skeptical, as most were. But as we got to talking about it, more and more people started thinking, you know, this could really happen. And so uh, um, we began planning this event in late May. And we wanted the event to happen in mid-July. So um, let me go on about the event. Um, it began at our tribal capital in Okmulgee, Oklahoma, and ended at the Oklahoma State Capitol in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Now, we are the first youth council to walk from a tribal capital to a state capital. So that's a really big feature um, to point out. 
um, a total of roughly 75 participants uh, participated in the march, um, and those participants included national council members, um, youth council members, at-large citizens of the Muscogee Nation, non-natives, and even members of other youth councils. And like I said, it began planning in late May, and in June, um, it was adopted as an official event. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. So how we promoted the Muscogee March. So when I thought about the march, I, I knew there was going to be a lot of obstacles in the way, but I also knew that it was an event that could happen. So when planning the event, you must think of how grand you want the event. So like I said, being that we were making history, we wanted the event to be as large as we can make it. And so, um, and I, I didn't just do this all by myself. I, need, I, I had so much help from other tribal departments, um, law enforcement, and so many other departments that really helped. And so when I was thinking about the event, I thought of, um, you know, what, why, why am I doing the event? And the event was um, Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. And, you know, this, this subject was really, really heavy on my heart. And I thought, you know, what a way to promote healthy relationships. What a way to let other people know that, you know, teen dating violence is a real, it's a real thing. And it happens in our communities, not only in our native community, communities, but everywhere else. And so um, that was the main goal, was to educate others um, that, were, that, that were along the route, educate ourselves about what it means to be in a healthy relationship, how to treat uh, your significant other, you know, so forth and so on. And so really the goal of the event was to educate others, educate ourselves, heal, heal some wounds. Um, you know, we even had survivors of... Uh, domestic assault and uh, teen dating violence along the walk. And it really was a time for us to come together and say, you know, this, this really is a problem. How do we, how do we fix it? And so um, there were a lot of things that we did. We had to have um, press releases, flyers. We even had our own website, a logo, um, permits to walk in uh, the Oklahoma City limits. Um, so, I mean, a lot of things went into this one event. So, if we can go to the next slide, I'll show you how we promoted the event. So, like I said, we did a lot of things. We worked with tribal departments. That was, um, at our Muscogee Nation, we have a uh, family violence prevention program, and they were instrumental in the whole thing. They provided us with food with um, T-shirts, some promo items, brochures. You know, they, they really were an instrumental part in this whole event. Um, even our youth services, they helped us out. Um, Light Horse Department, our tribal officers, they, everybody pitched into this one event. And um, we used our word of mouth. Now this one, um, I actually went to different meetings. I went to our intertribal council meetings and spoke about this event prior to the event just to get support from others other than just people from our tribe. And this really was an effective way because they saw that a youth was planning the event and it showed them that, hey, he, he, he knows what he's doing. He's got, he has passion for this event. And we also distributed flyers and posters. Um, we had a logo made, and with that logo we had um, – uh, flyers posted out throughout our community. Um, we put it on the website. I mean, it was all over uh, Muscogee Nation. And another thing we did was made and utilized connections. Now, this is very important when um, thinking about any event. We made connections with other youth councils, with other law enforcement, but we also utilized connections that we already had. For example, um, we had connections with our public relations office and our Muscogee Media. So we utilized those connections in how to get our event promoted via Native News Today, uh, our tribal newspaper, uh, public relations 
Facebook page. There were so many connections that we had already had, we just had to utilize them. And um, that's what we did the whole time. And we also created a Facebook page and a website. Now the website was, uh, um, I actually did the website myself and I made it in like a night. And that I stayed up, you know, throughout the night just promoting the event by the website. And so a website can be very great for your event, especially with something like the March, to where people can get more information on not only the March, but um, teen dating violence, awareness facts, you know, all sorts of other things like that. And we also had promo items. Now everybody likes promo items, especially t-shirts. So um, we had these orange t-shirts, orange being the color of teen dating violence awareness. And we had banners, we had sunglasses, there were so many things. And promo items are really nice for events because it's a little keepsake that you get to take with you. So can we go to the next slide, please? Mm, can we go to the next slide, please? All righty, here we go. have a poll question for everybody. Which social media site do you use the most? Okay, this is a very important question. Very important question. Um, for me personally, I like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, but... Um, it looks like a lot of you guys love Facebook, so that's pretty cool. I'd like to see that Instagram's coming up. Nice. Not very many people use Snapchat. <laughs> so it looks like Facebook is the site that a majority of you guys use, which is great. Still coming in. Yeah. Alrighty, so we'll go on to the next slide, please. So with Facebook being one of the most widely used um, social media sites, you have to utilize that social media site, right? So um, let's see. So according to the Pew Research Center, Seven out of ten Americans use social media in some way. Seven out of ten. That's a, a lot of people, if you think about it. You know, in the United States, we have millions of people. And just think of how many use social media. So it is very imperative to use social media in some way to promote an event that you have, whether it's, you know, on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, any way you have to utilize social media. And so now I'll talk about how to promote your events. So like I said, your word of mouth. If you go out to your communities, go out to schools, to the churches, any place that you can think of and tell them what you're doing and why you're doing it and, um, and promoting your event, people will realize that you have a passion for the event. Like I said earlier, you know, social media is a great, great site to promote any event, flyers and posters. Um, going along with social media is creating your own hashtag. You know, hashtags are great. Everybody can make one. It's easy as one, two, three. And hashtags are unique to your event. Also, you can make um, websites. You know, make a website. There's um, tons of free website creators out there. You have Weebly, Wix, and they're all free. Um, and also use connections that you've already created. Like I said earlier, utilize the connections that you have. Keep in mind that there's people out there that, that can help you. And um, if you're connected with one person, that person may be connected with another person. And it's almost like a, a domino effect, if you will. And then just promote your, your event in any way that you can think of. You know, on here is just a few, but you can promote your event in any way that you can. So. Next slide, please. So I'm going to talk to you about tips on coordinating your event. So like I said earlier, for the March, we, we planned late May, and we were going to have it 
in the middle of July. So that gave us like little, like less than a month to plan for the event. And I don't, I do not recommend that. Um, you want to have time to plan your event. And during this time, you have to think about um, what the goal, what the purpose is of your event, um, how much it's going to cost. You know, you want to have time to plan your event and be fully prepared for your event. And don't forget the three necess necessities. These are what I call my necessities. So the first one is money. Second one, support and passion. So what I mean by money is a lot of the events that we do here at the Muskogee Nation Youth Council, we, we need some type of financial support, whether that be our national council, are revolving the fund, you know, there's tons of different uh, financial sources out there. But you need money for uh, a lot of events. And so don't forget about, you know, just, just keep that in mind, the money part. Um, then you also need support. Now support comes, comes with, with you. You know, um, I couldn't have done the Muskogee March without the support of my adult advisors, the youth council members, other departments, my family, volunteers, friends. There were so many people that went into this. And that's why support is a uh, vital factor into your event. And you, all, you also want to keep in mind um, that you have to have a passion for your event. You know, some things might not go your way, but you want to have a passion for it. You know, if it doesn't go your way, keep in mind that, you know, this is my event. We're going to make it great. And keep pursuing your event. Also, you want to reach out to people in the community, at Unity, and anywhere you can. You know, if, you're, if you have a, an event plan and you want to let the whole world know, just reach out to some of the Unity officials. Um, Mary Kim, Wendy, um, there's a lot of people that you can reach out to in your tribal community and anywhere. Um, when I did the march, I reached out to Mary Kim. I sent her a message on Facebook and said, hey, we're doing this. What do you think? And she was all aboard. So, you know, just reach out to people. Uh, another one is take risk. You know, don't be afraid to step out and take a risk and say, hey, Mary Kim, can you possibly support this event by either attending or sharing it on Facebook? You know, you can't be shy or afraid when promoting any event. You know, you have to take risk. And the final thing to remember when co coordinating your event is remember what the goal of the event is. Like I said earlier, you want to have a goal of the event and keep in mind what is going to make the event successful. And so you always have to have that goal in mind when you're planning, when you're coordinating, and even afterwards when you're evaluating the event. So at this time, I'm going to turn it back over to Mary Kim. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Jay. I think um, Jay did a great job. And uh, going back to July, this past July, the event that the young people coordinated under Jay's leadership was awesome. So I think it's admirable that this type of event and the magnitude of it, really, I mean, walking 110 miles um, took a lot of coordinating. And, and uh, Jay, I didn't know that you only did it in a couple months' time, but uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. And uh, when we joined you, I know that there was uh, some media, and I was keeping tabs because it was like a week-long event, right? That's correct. It was a um, about four to five days, and we started on a um, Monday and got there on a Thursday, which was the beginning of the Unity Conference, and it just so happened that it tied in together. So there was lots of media there. There was our tribe, um, other media outlets. I mean, it was just a great, great time. And I appreciate you mentioning the social media because that's how I kept tabs on you guys every step of the way, what communities you were at, you know, who was hosting you, the, the meals that they provided, and it, it really was an awesome event. So um, thank you for, for sharing all of that. And we'll um, ask you uh, some questions, so don't leave us. We, we, we may ask for your input here. 
but we'll go on to um, talking about how to write a news release. And I know that uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, adults on the webinar today. Can you just type in uh, to share whether you've ever written a news release and uh, if that was a challenge or not? I know there's probably some of you out there who, who might have attempted to write a news release. Um, just curious, you know, how that went for you and what sources um, you may have used. I know we have, you know, the site that we can go to, uh, which is, is a, a good resource on how to write a news release. But uh, there's five uh, elements, actually, that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, you want to make them read like a news article, study news articles in your local paper. And I know some of us uh, may not buy the newspaper any longer, but uh, we do read those news releases on the Internet as well. So news articles will have the five W's and the H in their beginning paragraph, and this is what we call the lead. For those of you that may not be aware of my background, um, prior to my life as executive director of Unity, I worked as a TV news journalist. So I was in the TV news business for about 20 years. And during my tenure, I saw a lot of news releases that uh, were emailed to me or that were mailed uh, directly to me or to our news desk. So I'm going to share some tips with you as uh, I learned uh, as a journalist. Now, some general guidelines for preparing a news release. Um, you want to uh, have the basic elements, and those basic elements are what happened, who did it, why it happened, where it happened, when it happened, and how it happened. And there you see the five W's and the one H. What, who, why, where, when, how. And as Jay um, talked about his 110 mile walk, here's a news release I found uh, following their march. And Jay, I'm not sure who wrote this for you, uh, but it was very good. And so I want to use this as an example of the five W's and the H that were in the news release. You can see the headline, um, Muskogee Nation Youth Council marches 110 miles to raise awareness for teen dating violence. And then we'll go into the lead uh, paragraph. The Muskogee March 2016 is a youth-led initiative focused on bringing awareness to teen dating violence. The Muskogee March was held July 18 through the 21st, 2016. The event kicked off at 12 p.m. at the historic Muskogee Creek Nation Council House on July 18 and ended 110 miles later at the Oklahoma State Capitol at 12 p.m. where a teen dating violence awareness rally was held. Okay, I'm going to just go, go back to that very quickly. And let's talk about the five W's and the, uh, the H. So as you can see, the, the what, of course, is included. Um, what happened is the march. The who is the youth, um, youth led. This was the youth leading this event. The why, it was to bring awareness to teen dating violence. The where, they went from um, the Muskogee Creek uh, Nation Council House, which I imagine is their capital, to the state capital. The when, you can see the dates. The how. How did this happen? This is um, uh, the 110 miles. Um, they marched that far, so there's, the, there's a lot of detail in all of those who, what, where, when, why, and how. It's not a simple uh, yes or no answer. Emphasize what makes your release important. What in your release is going to grab people's attention. Why is it important to the community? And if you, um, if we go back to the news release, the why it's important to the community, I think, has a lot to do with uh, teen dating 
violence. And again, this is something that the youth were very passionate about, so that's pretty evident. So as we uh, continue to answer questions, we want to challenge ourselves to uh, think about why people would care about this event. We want to emphasize one or two of the basic elements um, and some highlights. For instance, if your tribal leader will be at the event, he's speaking, it's a, maybe a good idea to emphasize the who. If your event is a charity fundraiser uh, at a new recreation center, then emphasize the where. So as we continue to look at the rest of the news release, in the second paragraph, there's um, some more information. And this is why I think people may start to care a little bit more. There's some very important statistics here. According to Love is Respect, nearly 1.5 million high school students nationwide experience physical abuse from a dating partner, partner in a single year. One in three adolescents in the US, U.S. is a victim of physical, sexual, emotional, or verbal abuse from a dating partner, a figure that far exceeds rates of other types of youth violence. And one in 10 high school students has been purposefully hit, slapped, or physically hurt by a boyfriend or a girlfriend. And um, Jay, I know that when we were walking, and I joined you for the last part of that march, you, uh, I interviewed you just on my phone, and um, you were very knowledgeable. I'm sure you um, took a look at some of those statistics, and, and those were some of your talking points. Yes, um, I did some research on um, a few of the, um, you know, teen dating violence and a little bit about domestic abuse. and. Um, you know, I really, um, I've kind of been um, exposed to some of this. Um, I know some survivors, and it, it, the, the whole topic just was heavy on my heart, and I knew that something had to be done. And by pulling out these statistics, it made people realize, like, wow, this is a real epidemic. And so I think it's, it was very important for me to do some research on that. Yeah, you were very prepared. So again, as Jay emphasized, be as pro provocative as you can. Most media, especially in large cities, get tons of releases every week. And uh, again, going back to my journalist days, we certainly did receive a lot of those and phone calls every day. And we have to pick and choose. Uh, so you want to find an eye-opening aspect to your release, or at least make sure your points are strongly emphasized. So. This all points um, to a strategy and how you're going to um, build rapport with media representatives here at Unity. We do that very same thing. We have built rapport with um, news agencies around the country. We have a database of uh, media contacts. When we want to get uh, some attention for the things that we're doing at Unity, we make contacts with those people. So on a national scale, uh, we have some good media contacts, so it's good to build a database. Uh, and in addition to the local news agencies, we have a good rapport with some of the local uh, news agencies. And, and thanks to my relationships with uh, some of them that are still there, we're able to you know, give them a call and say, hey, here's what we're doing. Can you send a photographer or a journalist over? And so it's really important to build those uh, connections. And, and again, um, as you're building your news release, Going back to that inverted pyramid that we mentioned at the beginning of the um, webinar, emphasizing a lot of your important points at the top. And this is important for print journalism because if you put too much information in there and you put a lot of important information at the bottom, sometimes it gets um, deleted. It gets cut off. And they'll only print a portion of your news release. So strategy is very good uh, and important in establishing those um, media connections. Now we're going to talk about talking points. Of course, this is very important. Gather the facts and do your research, which is obviously what we heard from Jay. Simplify your message for clarity. Uh, sometimes, you know, just uh, giving off a lot of facts uh, isn't always um, what the media is looking for, but they're looking for those personal stories. And I think Jay mentioned that as well. He, he knew um, people personally who had been affected by this, so that's very good. I know uh, recently uh, when we were asked about unity, uh, and sometimes it's difficult to explain what unity is you know, in a nutshell, 
Um, so you want to look at those talking points. And for us, we use our slogan, which is inspiring hope, changing lives. So unity inspires hope and changes lives. And just building upon that message. Uh, practice makes perfect. So you always want to practice and, and you know, maybe it's just standing in front of a mirror and, and, and having uh, you ask yourself questions or, or pairing up with somebody and say, hey, just pretend you're a journalist and ask me some questions. Um, reviewing some of the things that are on the news. Um, a lot of times nowadays with uh, social media or the website, the news agencies will put interviews and stories on their websites so that you can review them. So review them and you know critique yourself. Um, you know make uh, the, the next one even better. So we're going to review some questions and we want to uh, allow some some time for question and answer. But um, Jay, I know that you were interviewed by the media. Were there others in your group that were interviewed? And if so, um, how did they prepare? Um, yes. Um, for the march, I was interviewed by um, newspaper, um, TV. You know, there were different media outlets that interviewed. But um, when we won Youth Council of the Year, there was actually different um, members that were interviewed. And they were not um, expecting to be interviewed. Um, but we kind of went through a practice run and just said, you know, why are you a member um, how long have you been doing this? Why do you do this? You know, and we kind of did it one on one with each other. Um, the interviewer said, "Hey, we want this many people. Give us this many," and then we just practice within ourselves. And I think that's a, a great recommendation to just um, have a practice run. Uh, I'd like to ask a question to those that are online to answer the question about um, your youth council and um, an example of when you were in the media and when your youth council was in the media. I know that um, there are lots of youth councils out there doing great things. And we just want to know um, how many of you have had the good fortune of being recognized by the media. And whether you think your, your youth were prepared, um, I'm going to go to a question here that was asked. Uh, let's see, what if you don't have anyone on your team that used to work in journalism? Uh, how, I think that last bit was uh, cut off. As I mentioned, there's some really good examples of how to write a news release on, on the uh, website. But also um, some talking, you know, just having some talking points prepared. As Jay said, doing some practice um, sessions. And we've had some of you who have had uh, some good experience um, writing news releases. I know at times I'll challenge my staff here at the Unity office to write news releases. And sometimes it, it's, it can be a challenge if you've never done it before. OK, here's a question. Oh, this is at somebody else. Do you have any local meetings or organizations for public information officers? Um, I do want to make reference to Jay's uh, presentation when he talked about tapping into their tribal agencies. And one of those was their, I think, was it marketing agency, Jay, or public relations person? They helped you quite a bit, didn't they? Yes. Um, we teamed with our Muskogee Media and also our Office of Public Relations. And that's a great resource. Uh, and then so here's, uh, I'm going to try to go down a little bit further. OK, let me see. Sorry. I'm trying to look at some of the questions that have come down. What? OK, I already had, I did that one. I know that um, there may be, you know, some questions about just building relationships. Sometimes it's just like, OK, who's your favorite newscaster? And um, giving them a call or calling the news agency and saying, hey, I need an email for so-and-so, uh, writing them an email. I often, when I worked as a journalist, would get uh, emails randomly from people that I never uh, knew. And they said, I watch you on TV, and I'm a teacher at this school, or you know, um, I am a tribal leader, and we have uh, this event going on. Um, and, and that's how those relationships begin. 
just by making that first contact. So even if you don't know anyone, uh, I would say, you know, take the time to just reach out. Uh, if, if they don't respond to you, try again. Uh, some people say, I've sent you, you know, five or six um, different things and you, you don't cover it. Uh, my response to them was, well, you know what, send me another one. <laughs> I, I may have been busy those past six times, but on the seventh one, who knows, I may decide to do it. So don't give up. Uh, that's one of my recommendations as a former journalist is don't give up um, on getting that media attention. I would say it's a good idea to even have um, two or three people from your group um, calling news agencies to say, um, hey, this is so-and-so. I think this is an important event. Um, sometimes it's the youth. It's the young person who makes the call that makes a difference. So um, I know when we're putting something together, getting comments, uh, from our youth leaders. Uh, we try to include that in our news release because after all, it's all about the youth. Um, Jay, do you have any other ideas or suggestions on how to get the media's attention? Yes. Um, so back to that question about what if you don't have anyone um, working in journalism or any connections made. Um, <laughs> one of the things that we, we actually ran into this problem, um, we needed a place to stay on the third night and we didn't we didn't know where to go so i asked around and one of my cousins actually knew somebody um who went to this church and she said maybe the church would be able to help you so i was thinking okay we can stay at a church you know good place to stay at and so i drove up to the church and i talked to the youth minister the pastor and then told him about the event and um, when, after we got done talking, he was said, yes, you, you guys can stay here for the night. And so I just took a risk of, you know, I didn't know what church it was. I didn't know who the pastors, who the ministers were. I didn't know any of them. I just took that risk of, hey, here's an opportunity. Let me just try. And so really it's all about just taking a risk. So. Thank you, Jay. And I do see uh, some more comments from other people. What if the media doesn't pick up uh, all the time? How do we get more consistent media coverage? You know, some, um, and I'll just point to some school districts who are very good about this. A lot of school districts, especially in large metro areas, tend to send out a lot of news releases. And um, they have lots of schools that are doing things. And so um, from time to time, you'll see media agencies who, like say they have morning shows, um, they do live events at these schools. And um, I will just say that, you know, it's because the school districts are very aggressive. Um, they keep, you know, uh, and I'm, I don't want to say uh, pestering, but they, uh, they just, they're just very aggressive and they're very passionate about what their youth are doing. So they get a lot of promotion. And you see that out here in the Phoenix area where you might see more coverage on maybe one school district as opposed to another. Um, so just, you know, like I said, don't give up. What if you don't have anyone you're, okay, I, I, we talked about that, uh, building relationships. Are there any unique considerations folks should be aware of when it comes to working with promoting the work of minors? And that's a very good question. When we do uh, any, and this is again speaking as a former journalist, any work with schools, there are minors there. We'll always make sure ahead of time that the youth have signed um, permission slips, and most school districts do this. Um, here at Unity, when we have our conferences and our events, that's one of the forms that we include in our um, applications or our uh, registrations is that permission slip so that you know it's clear uh, any of our youth can be um, interviewed when the media shows up. So that's very important, uh, making sure that you have the right uh, permission. So uh, we're going to go to a poll question here and just review a little bit about what was shared. Uh, news articles will have the five what and one what. So is it A, the five H's and a W, the five W's and an H, the five W's and a D, or five H's and an L, or I guess that's the only option. <laughs> okay, we have a majority saying it's the 
five W's and an H. We have one person who said it was the five H's and a W. Okay, so they changed their answer. Good. Um, absolutely, it's the five W's and an H. Again, who, what, where, when, why, and how. Thank you for participating in that poll. And uh, again, we're going to go to a few more questions. Uh, I have a question for those that are that have joined us. If you could tell me whether you are um, part of a youth council, that would be helpful. If so, what youth council you're affiliated with, whether it's as a youth member or whether it's as an advisor. Um, here at the Unity office, it's always great to know what youth councils have, are participating in our webinars or any of our events. Jay, have you thought of any other um, tips that you'd like to add? Um, no, I just want to reiterate that just just take risk and don't be afraid and you know just just have a great time with your event. Thank you. Jay, and it looks like we've got quite a few uh, that are typing, and uh, we have some with the Police Department Youth Advisory Board. Um, we have others on here, uh, looks like from all over the country, Aztec Schools, Native American Education Coordinator. Uh, Alaska. Just from all, yeah, from Alaska, all over the country. This is great. Thank you for joining us. We do have at our national conference, which is coming up in July, uh, some workshops that will be offered about um, a variety of topics, but uh, one including uh, communication. Um, at our mid-year conference this past week, we had a, a, a workshop on um, developing a communication plan. And the youth seem to really uh, like that because many times we, you know, go into an event without thinking about a communication plan. And that's something I wanted to ask you, Jay. Did you have a communication plan when you started planning your event? Or did was that kind of an afterthought? Well, it was, we didn't really have a plan. Um, we just, when thinking about it, it, um, you know, kind of media attention really came along with it. When we were thinking about it, we just we thought, how are we going to promote? How are we going to promote? And so that was really the idea behind the whole event was promoting it. And so, we, we like I said, we really didn't have a plan, but as time went along, we kind of got an understanding of, hey, what, these are the things we need in order to get this. So, for example, um, we had to have the set dates before we can have a press release, and. We had to have a logo before we could do T-shirts and promo items. So we we kind of made our plan as we went along. So and that kind of goes back to having plan um, having time to plan your event. So <laughs> thanks. And I I think Jay, that's an important for um, and the reason I ask is because a lot of groups um, do the same thing. It's it it tends to be not something that we think of as we're planning an event. Um, here at the Unity office, we try very hard to think of our, our communication strategy, how we're going to promote our event, and uh, again, all the ways that you mentioned through social media, news releases. Um, we also use um, a resource to us that um, I think some of the older folks on the webinar um, uh, may use it too, and that's our fax uh, blast. We, we do faxes because a lot of uh, organizations and um, agencies, schools, still use um, faxes. So we send the faxes uh, every now and then. And another thing is just the automated calls. We do, uh, in fact, we did one today to remind everyone that we're going to have a webinar. So we think of all of the ways that we can communicate um, to our uh, stakeholders on any upcoming events. Um, Thank you uh, again for those that have um, shared where uh, they're from and what agency or department or youth council they're representing. I really appreciate that. Are there any more questions? This is your time to ask us a question about something that you may have heard or you know, um, how we could better prepare you uh, to write a news release. 
On the documents or handouts, um, you will see there's a sample Unity news release. Uh, there's also the news release that I shared earlier uh, regarding the, the Muscogee Creek uh, March, uh, Youth Council March from this summer. Uh, so you can have those two uh, samples to use if you need it. Okay, so here's a question about uh, press releases. Should they re contain photographs? Absolutely. If you have an event that happened and you want to promote the event through photographs, and many times print agencies are looking for that, uh, I will tell you that more often than not, uh, newspapers, especially tribal newspapers, are trying to fill space. And um, so if you have photos, absolutely, please um, send that. And then here's another one. Are releases required for youth photos? Um, well, it kind of depends on your own internal requirement. If your youth council already requires um, that releases be signed, then you're covered. I know when I was a youth council advisor, that was something that we did when youth council um, members were recruited. We had a packet for them so that um, they signed the press you know, uh, release uh, or photograph release. That was also something that we did at the school district that I worked with. All students are required to sign that. And we always paid attention to those that did not give permission, so that's important. And Jay, that's a, I want, I'm curious as to whether any of your, because you had quite a few youth walking. Did um, all of them sign uh, releases, media releases? Oh, yes. <laughs> when we were planning this event, um, my adult advisor, Nancy, she made it clear that we need all types of release. Um, because we were walking 110 miles, you know, a lot can happen in 110 miles. You know, people could get hurt. Um, you know, maybe, God forbid, uh, an accident happened, but you know, there's all these possibilities. But yes, we had them sign um, releases before they could walk, um, a press um, photo release, consent, you know, there was all sorts of releases because we were looking after them and the liability issues that were there. So, great question. Okay, so here's another question. If you need to cancel an event, what's standard timeline? Should it be included, alternative dates, etc.? Absolutely. You can, um, of course, call up a news agency and uh, let them know, hey, we're postponing our event or we're just canceling this event altogether. Um, it's always important to alert the media if you've already sent out a press release to send another one to let them know that it's been canceled. And using all your forms of media is important. Arthur Thomas is asking, can we get a sample of the release used? It, yes, and it is included on the handouts um, that you can download. The Muscogee Creek uh, Nation Youth Council release is on there, and there's a lot more information. I only uh, showed the first couple of paragraphs, but there was a quote from Jay. Um, there was uh, a lot of uh, other good information. He mentioned that you know it uh, tied into the National Unity Conference, so that was mentioned in the news release. So it really is a good example of um, a news release that can be sent out post-event. Um, and there's a difference, of course, pre-event and post-event. Pre-event, obviously, you were promoting an event, and post-event, um, you're promoting it, but you're, you're you were actually like the reporter that was there. So you have to provide all the information and the photos. Any other questions? We also have some um, good resources that we want to offer you. Other past webinars that we've done are related to today's Native Leaders. Uh, which is funded by the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention. It's on the UNITY website, unityinc.org. Um, we have one that's um, from last year, how to develop a communications plan that's there with handouts, as well as a variety of other um, webinars about youth council action planning, uh, et cetera. So we hope you'll visit our website and find out what more resources um, there are being offered. So I, again, I want to say 
thank you to Jay, who's been very helpful. Um, I think, Jay, you learned a lot just as in planning your event, uh, what it's like to um, create awareness and get media attention for your event. So moving forward, I'm sure that you may do things a little bit different uh, with more time and uh, more planning. But thank you, Jay. Thank you. So if there are, um, wait, I think I see one more question, reporting during events. Um, any tips for reporting during events using Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook Live, etc. Yes, and um, thank you for bringing that up. At Unity, especially um, during our signature events like the Mid-Year National Conferences, we do a lot of uh, Facebook Live um, sharing. We also have all the social um, media uh, pages, including Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, uh, and we are using all of those to promote all of the great things that our youth are doing. So uh, as far as um, tips, boy, there's, um, there's quite a few. I think graphics are really good, and they seem to highlight um, uh, the right information. So if you have a, a, a graphic person or can find one, I think that's important. Photographs definitely um, can help. And if you can link it or cross-promote to a website or YouTube or um, any other resources, that's always great. If possible, it helps to have a point of contact if folks have questions. Uh, yes, on your news releases, you do want to uh, have a, a point of contact so that somebody um, is always uh, pointed to that. We have somebody here at the Unity office uh, who handles all media inquiries. So, uh, that definitely is important. So if there are no more questions, I'm going to turn it back to um, Carissa, and we'll just we'll start to wrap it up. Thank you, Mary, Kim, and Jay, for a great discussion on this topic. We have just a few brief reminders. Um, this webinar will be archived in OJDP's online university in approximately three weeks. Uh, for more information, please contact Unity. Put the information here on the slide. You may also contact OJDP or NTAC via help desk by following the contact information on this slide. And again, thank you for joining us today. Have a great evening. <laughs>